right, welcome everybody. We'll start in mountain pose. <laughs> we'll just take a few moments as we prepare for our practice. You might start with a few deep breaths. So inhale fully and completely, maybe through your nose. And exhale through your mouth with a sigh. <sighs> Notice how your shoulders relax. You might give them a little circle. Check in with your head and neck. Return to your breath and just do the same thing. A nice full breath in. And a complete exhale. Just feel your body settle into the space, fully arriving. And continue to check in with your body. Notice how you're feeling. Aware of how your practice might be beneficial to you today. As you're checking in, be sure you're also just breathing naturally. Awareness of breath. And just continue your journey inward. Slow, steady breaths. And feel your breath. Experience how your body is responding to your breath. That might be the rise and fall of your chest or belly. And listen to the sound of your breath. These are ways to fully connect. These are also tips toward meditation. So in a sense, we're meditating. And soon breath will guide us through a moving meditation. But first, just bring a little bit more energy to your breath. Be more mindful of your body and how it feels. With a nice full inhale, and just feel the breath rising to fill your lungs. And with this exhale, draw your navel inward toward your spine, that light contraction of your abdominal muscles. As you find awareness of your center body. Again, an inhale, feel the lengthening of your spine as breath rises filling up your lungs and opening up your heart space. Exhale, draw belly in. And perhaps three more breaths like this. Now ready for our moving meditation, our half salute. As you inhale, extend your arms out and up, a nice stretch, reach into the air. Then exhale, fold forward, so a hinge from your hips, bending your knees as much as you need to, and slowly fold, making your way down toward your toes. Inhale, slide your hands up to your shins or knees and extend your spine so it's long and flat. And exhale, just melt back down towards toes. We'll just hold here for several breaths. As you're able, just hang heavily forward, allowing gravity to draw you downward. If that's a little bit too much tension or sensation, maybe just rise up a little bit. Rest your hands higher up on your legs as you need to. And wherever you are, just notice the sensations in your body. Down through the backs of your legs. The rounded spine. your shoulders, your neck, let's return to a halfway lift. So an inhale, just slide your hands up to your shins or knees, only rising up halfway. So hold here on the exhale and just keep breathing in and out. Keeping the softness in the knees, engaged legs, and feet firmly connected to the earth, elongated through the spine. 
or half forward fold. And then a weight shift into your heels, bend your knees and lower your hips, and then rise up, we'll extend the arms out, then up. Inhale, reaching up high. This exhale, you can bring your palms together and down to your heart or bring your arms straight down to your side. And just pause for a moment, take another deep breath. Let's move through that sequence again. When you're ready, inhale, sweep your arms out and up. Big stretch, lengthening and opening. Exhale, fold forward. Again, soft knees, guide your way down towards toes. Then inhale, rise up halfway, long, flat back. Exhale, back down towards toes. Same weight, shift into your heels, bend your knees, start to lift your upper body, arms out, then up as you inhale, getting much taller. Exhale, hands to heart or arms down to your side. Another pause here, deep breaths. We'll continue to flow and move with breath. And as always, move at your own pace, modify, and rest whenever you need to. Let's continue with our sun salute. Inhale, sweep your arms out and up. And exhale, swan dive forward. A good hinge from hips, bend your knees and guide your way down towards toes. Then inhale, rise up halfway, long flat back. This exhale, fold, bend your knees quite a bit so you can place your hands on your mat out in front of you and just walk or step or even hop both feet back until you're in plank pose. Just briefly here as you inhale, exhale our shortcut to down dog. Just bend your knees a little, send your hips into the sky. And there's our downward facing dog, making the adjustments with your feet, even your hands as you need to, to help you settle into your pose. Perhaps soft knees, that way you still have mobility in your hips, so you can continue to feel them rise, lift, helping you to extend through your torso and spine. Hands pressed firmly into the mat, so strong hands, strong arms. Relax your head, you might nod a few times, shake your head no a few times. Feel free just to hold your posture, or you Add movement so you might pedal your feet or walk the dog. Press one heel down as the other heel lifts and just alternate, stretching through your toes, your calves, even the soles of your feet, and just notice where else you might have sensation. A couple more breaths. From here, a nice full breath in. Exhale, walk, step, or hop both feet. Return to the top of the mat. You'll be in forward fold. Inhale, re-extend your spine, halfway lift. Exhale, refold. Weight shift into your heels, bend your knees. Inhale, reverse your swan dive, grow tall. Reach up. This exhale, take chair pose. We'll keep the body in motion, so chair pose or a chair-like position. It's called Utkatasana. There we are, we're going to breathe in more extension through your arms and torso. Then exhale, dive out of your seat, back down towards toes, forward fold. There we are. Inhale, rise up halfway, elongating through your spine. Exhale, fold, bend your knees more, plant your hands into the mat, hop, step, or walk the feet back into plank pose. Again, just a brief pause. You can take that same shortcut to down dog, or with your exhale, finish your push-up. You might bend your elbows, squeeze them in towards your ribs. You can even bring knees to the floor first. Find a back bend, it might be a low cobra or an upward facing dog. And exhale, guide your hips into the air, downward facing dog. Again, adjust your feet, adjust your hands, soft knees, hips high, strong hands and arms, relaxed head and neck. Then inhale, extend your right leg up behind you, reaching long. Exhale, let's step right foot to the top of the mat. You'll land near the right hand. There you go. Turn left heel to the floor behind you. Find balance by shifting weight into that back foot. Hands are light, so you're using the hinging from the hips and muscles of the legs to rise up first warrior. And exhale, we'll hinge and fold and just make your way back down to the ground. Plant the hand strongly. Slide your right foot back to meet the other. Finish your sequence as you like. Don't forget you can send knees to the floor first, then chest for the Chaturanga Dandasana. Maybe your back bend this time is a cobra pose. Then exhale, downward facing dog. You might first push back to hands and knees and then lift knees and hips into the air. 
Lots of ways to guide your body into downward facing dog. All right, other side. So inhale, extend left leg up, reaching back dynamically. Exhale, step left foot to the top of the mat, land near left hand, right heel turns to the floor, finding that balance, then rise up, taking your time. Good, then our exhale will hinge and fold, make your way back down to the floor, slide the left foot back, there's our plank pose. And again, just complete the series as you'd like. Always okay just to take the shortcut right into down dog and we'll always meet together there. A breath or two here. And we're going to do some floor work. So you're going to bring your knees to the floor. Sit back briefly in hero. Then off to the side so you can swing your legs around to the front. Scoot forward so you're sitting in the center of your mat. Then go ahead and roll down onto your back. Then draw your knees into chest. Feel free to add some movement here. Check in with your wrist. You might circle the wrist, wiggle your fingers. Check in with your feet. You might flex and point with the feet. Circle the ankles. Then we'll get set up for bridge pose. Go ahead and set your feet onto the ground. The feet and knees can be hip distance apart or feel free to take the feet a little wider. This can always be adjusted once you're in the pose. Lie flat for a moment. And then get ready to move. First, an inhale, fill up your lungs. Maybe an exhale through the mouth. Feel the air empty from the belly. Engage your core muscles, then lift your hips up into the air. You can just stay lifted like this or not even lift very high and slide a block underneath you, underneath you and sit on the block for a supported bridge pose or even use your hands to help lift yourself up and then hold yourself up. Another way to support your upper body is to bend your arms so your elbows, your arms are at 90 degrees. Pressing into the floor with the backs of the shoulders, the backs of your arms, your triceps and then elbows and notice how that helps you to stay afloat here. Feeling the engaged body, strong thighs, engage hamstrings and glutes, opening through the whole front side of your body. Let's take two more breaths. After that second breath, just wiggle the feet forward a little bit, extend your arms up into the air, just making space in the back body so you can safely and slowly return to the ground. Once you've landed, extend your arms behind you, extend your legs out in front of you. Just reach and stretch in these opposite directions. We're going to continue with some floor work here, getting into our hips, some hip openers here on the ground. You can just bring your arms down by your side, bend your knees again, feet on the floor. I'm going to move into reclining pigeon and more formally known as eye of the needle pose. We'll start by lifting the right foot and cross the right ankle or the left thigh. And once you've crossed that leg, just lightly flex the right foot. It just helps to activate the leg. Now this could be the end of the pose. This might be enough of a hip opener for you, but if not, lift your left foot off the floor and draw the legs toward yourself. Now this is where you thread the needle, your right arm and hand become the thread. Just go through that eye of the needle and just fold your fingers around the left shin, around the left, uh, around the left hamstrings, whatever you can catch there. And just some deep breathing. What's nice about this pose is that you can adjust the sensation. If you draw the legs in closer toward your body, there might be more sensation. And the more you send the legs away, less sensation. Even play with maybe rocking left and right and see if that changes the sensations in your legs. Notice where you are having feeling. I'm noticing this in my right outer hip and glute area. Another added piece is to extend the left leg into the air. Lightly flex that foot and send the heel up into the air. And of course, you're still holding on to the legs. 
Now remember this pose because we're going to do a similar pose in a seated fashion. Two more breaths. After the second breath, just bend your left knee, set the foot onto the floor, uncross the legs, and just hold here. Let everything soften, release, and relax. Take a deep breath. We'll do eye of the needle on the other side. So when you're ready, we'll pick up the left foot, cross left ankle over right thigh, a light flex of the left foot. Again, you might stay here. This could be the end of your pose. Or pick up the right foot, draw the legs towards your body. Thread the needle, left arm goes through the eye of the needle, hold on to the right leg. Again, paying attention to the sensation, breathing into the sensation, or imagine you are sending the breath directly to the spot where you have the most sensation. Just giving a little bit more oxygen, even just more pranic energy. Try adding that rock left and right, or the little circles, whatever might feel good. Just experiment with some movements here. And then if you'd like extending the right leg into the air, a light flex of that foot, of course, still holding on to the leg as it gets a light stretch and extension. Two more breaths. And after the second breath, bend your right knee. We'll set the foot onto the floor. Let's uncross the legs. Again, another pause. Settle. When you're ready, draw both knees into chest. You can rock your way up to seated. Or if you need to, rock or roll to one side and rise up. Press yourself up to seated and ready for boat pose. In boat pose, you can certainly have the heels on the floor, holding onto the backs of the legs and extend the spine. I like to do this initially to ensure my spine and torso is nice and long, and then leaning back. You can stay just like this or lean back more, lift your feet okay, and activate the feet by flexing the feet or pointing your toes, either one, holding onto the legs, releasing, holding on or even straightening the legs. There's our boat pose, so lots of variations. Let's take a breath in and exhale. Maybe cross legs if you can, hands in front or even to the side. So we can get the legs back behind us. Return to plank pose. Strong bodies, engage core center, and then a shortcut to down dog. Just bend your knees, send your hips into the air. Fully arrive in the posture. Take a breath. Then inhale, extend right leg up into the air. Hold here as you exhale and feel the body get longer. Reach through that foot. Even press the hands more into the floor so you feel the body get longer. We're making some space so we can create another hip opener here. So bend your right knee, bring your heel down towards your backside, lifting the knee a little bit so you feel a slight rotation in your spine perhaps as the hips open up towards the right side of the room. Now we're gonna draw a big circle in the air with the right knee. So big circle around. So the knee might drop and come back up and around. Maybe a couple times one direction and then try the other direction. Just really get into that hip socket. And then just finish here at the top, breathing in. We'll exhale and unwind and step through. Right foot to the top of the mat near right hand. Left heel turns to the floor. Find that centering. And inhale, hinge from hips, rise up, first warrior. Exhale, opening to the left side of the room, you'll be in warrior two. And just settling in, yes. Make some adjustments with the feet. Make sure your right knee and toes are pointing directly forward. So again, we're getting into a hip opener, inner legs. Feel nice and tall, like your torso is lifting, yes, up out of the pelvic bowl. That's gonna give us some space as we reach out over the right leg, angled upper body, rotate here with the arms. Reach down, reach up. Feel free to stay up high. You can always have your right arm or even right hand on your right leg. And some deep breaths here.
Take a breath in and exhale. We'll carefully turn, fold, hands to the floor. Strong connection, slide right foot back, plank pose. And another shortcut to downward facing dog. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So an inhale to extend left leg up, reach back. Feel long here, reach through the foot, hands press firmly into the floor, feel the body get longer, and then we'll open the hip by bending the left knee, heel comes down, a little lift of the knee, a little turn of the torso towards the left side of the room, hip opener. And then try those circles, big circles with the knee. Feel that in the hip. That's it. A couple times one direction, a couple times in the other direction, and then just finish at the top. We inhale here, then exhale to unwind and step through. Left foot to the top of the mat. Good. Right heel to the floor. Find that base and balance. Rise up first, warrior. And exhale, opening to your warrior two. That's it. Adjusting for good balance and stability. Strong legs, tall torso. Making space so we can move into our side angle pose. Reaching out, angled upper body, rotate the arms, reach down, reach up. Just as our back bends are considered heart openers, I like to think of this pose also as a heart opener. Getting into the hips, inner legs. We'll breathe in and our exhale, a careful return down to the floor with the hands, slide left foot back, plank pose. And then just finishing your series. It could still be the shortcut to down dog or chaturanga dandasana, up dog or a cobra pose. Finishing in downward facing dog. And then breathe in. Exhale, walk, step or hop, both feet return to the top of the mat. You'll be in forward fold. Inhale, just rise up halfway or just feel the extended spine. You don't have to lift up too high. Exhale, refold. Weight shift into your heels, bend your knees. Inhale, reverse your swan dive, grow tall. Reach into the air, another nice stretch. Exhale, arms down to your side. Good, nice warm up. Check in with your body, shoulders and hips. We got hip openers today. We're gonna do tree pose. Yes, it's a balancing pose, but I consider it a hip opener. Okay, because we get that same formation here, almost like our, a warrior two positioning. All right, so starting in mountain pose, softness in the knees, take your time as we now shift weight into right foot, strong active leg, feel tall and lengthen through the spine as you breathe in, good. Exhale, pull belly in for security. We'll peel the left foot up off the floor, lift, lifting until maybe the thigh is parallel with the floor and flex the foot. Here's the hip opener as it starts to swing outward until it just naturally stops. It could be here. It might be to this side of the room and then place foot on the inside of the standing leg. It could be below the knee or above the knee. Just assist your own body by placing it there with your hand or use the floor. Now we'll get taller by inhaling to extend the arms up into the air. Once they're up, lift. And that's that same lift we just did in Warrior Two. Ah, so we can get into our side angle, lots of space. And in this case for you, in tree pose, maybe the knee, because of the lift and space creation, the knee might point a bit more to the side of the room. Being sure your hips are still square, facing forward, they haven't turned. Let's keep the arms extended. We'll swing the left knee forward, lifting knee flexed foot. Plant the foot into the ground so you're balanced on two feet, and then arms return to your side. Be sure to shake all that out. Check in with the feet, even down to your toes, the foot you were just standing on. Mm-hmm. Ankles and toes. And then set yourself up for the other side. So mountain pose, starting with soft knees. Weight shift into your left foot. Strong thigh. Inhale, tall through the spine. Exhale, pull belly in, keep breathing. Float the right foot up, thigh parallel to the floor, flex foot. Hips are square, knee starts to swing open until it just naturally stops. Placing foot on the inside of your standing leg, high, medium, or low. Let's get long in the torso and inhale to reach the arms up. Keep lifting, feel that space creation. As you get longer, decompressed through all sides of the body, side, front, and back, decompressing the spine. 
more opening in the hips as the knee perhaps points a tiny bit more towards the right side. Good, let's keep the arms extended. We'll swing the right knee forward now, lifting the knee with a flexed foot, plant the foot into the ground. There's our balance and arms can come back down. Ah, deep breaths, circle the shoulders, check in with the hips, knees, feet and ankles. Good. Ah, and we'll continue our flow. When you're ready, inhale, extend the arms into the sky, more extension work. Exhale, swan dive. Bent knees, finding the ground perhaps. Inhale, rise up halfway to extend the spine. Exhale, fold and bend. Hands to the floor, step back into plank pose. Okay, hold plank for a moment, then follow me. We're gonna send the knees to the floor. Then we're gonna send the chest to the floor. All right, as you are down here, just to adjust your body, you just wanna feel like you can point your toes behind you and feel like you're trying to reach for the back wall through your toes. Hands can remain underneath the shoulders for now. If the shoulders seem to be dipped towards the floor, we're gonna lift them or roll them away from the floor and squeeze your shoulder blades together behind you to activate your upper back. Now with that, it's gonna help us lift slightly. Spread out your fingers, grip your mat with your fingertips and try to pull, like you're trying to drag yourself forward on your mat. Meanwhile, you're still pointing your toes and reaching behind you. Okay, hold that for a couple more seconds. Just this activation, just a very low cobra or locust pose. All right, soften a little bit. Now you're gonna step your hands back a little bit. Now with my arms, if you can see them, they're probably around 90 degrees. Okay, you make, we just wanna make sure your palms are flat on the ground, they haven't lifted, and the elbows are squeezing in towards your ribs. We're gonna move into an up dog, or close to it, okay? Keep lengthening through the legs, point your toes. Roll the shoulders back, squeeze shoulder blades together. We're gonna inhale and just push into the floor with the hands. You have leverage, because the arms are at 90 degrees, just to lift so your belly and hips are off the floor. Elbows can remain bent. This could be the end of your pose. You're pushing down to lift, grip mat with fingertips and try to pull yourself forward. As you're pulling forward, look forward. Looking forward, even send, send your heart forward. Maybe this is the end. If you can, straighten the arms and lift a little higher. Maybe the knees lift up off the floor, pressing the tops of the feet into the ground. But you can see, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm still trying to pull myself forward. We'll set the knees down, send the hips back so the hips are over the knees. Take the knees wide so we can sit back into child's pose. All righty. Now child pose in this condition should be a nice counter pose to those back bends. Because the back is both lengthened and slightly round here in child's pose. And if your hands or arms or shoulders are a little tired, feel free to bring your arms down by your side like you're reaching for your feet or ankles. That way your shoulders can relax here for a moment. So I had, I had us kind of break down that upward facing dog or back bend, because it's gonna be used a little bit later with a different pose. In a way, yes you are. Okay, that way you can decompress that low back as much as possible. It's a really good question because that main thing is because you're lifting up the way that we are, that can put a lot of you know, pressure into the low spine, right? So that's why you're trying to extend to get long. You're pulling yourself forward and trying to pull it back at the same time, trying to decompress and get as much length and at the same time as you're lifting up through the chest, yeah, it doesn't feel like your pelvis can move, but you can kind of tuck under a, a little bit. It will engage, engage the glutes to help strengthen that section of the body to help protect the low back. But you don't have to lift that high in up dog. All right, nice question. That's really good about kind of breaking down upward facing dog. So let's rise back up to hero briefly. Hands out front on the mat, tuck toes, lift knees, and hips into the air. Knees can stay soft, continue lengthening through the spine, lifting the hips higher, hands root into the floor. 
All right, let's just make the sequence flow. We'll inhale, pick up the right foot, bend the knee, open up a little bit. Unwind and step through, right foot to the top of the mat, left heel turns to the floor, shifting the body weight back, plant that back foot. Hinge from hips, inhale, rise up, first warrior. Exhale, opening to warrior two. Now arrive in the pose, just make some adjustments with the feet so you feel pretty grounded here. Now we're gonna take this a little deeper, and I do mean little. You're gonna take your right foot and just kind of creep it forward a tiny bit, once or twice. Doesn't have to move too much. Same with the back foot, just a little bit. And that takes you deeper into the pose without having to go too far. Okay, strong legs. Ah, lifted torso, make space in that pelvic bowl. Arms extended, maybe having made a little bit more space to reach out for our side angle pose. Maybe the right hand gets a little closer to the floor, if it's not already touching the floor. Here we go, breathing in. Exhale, a careful return to the floor. So fold or turn and fold, hands to the mat, set and slide, right foot back, plank pose. Let's do that breakdown of up dog again. Send the knees down, send the heart down. Long legs, point your toes. Reach through your toes. Step the hands back. Your thumbs will be kind of be at the last rib. Arms are at 90 degrees. Grip your mat with your fingers, so spread out your fingers. Roll the shoulders back, squeeze shoulder blades together. This is all the setup. Reach through your toes. When you inhale, push into the floor to lift your belly and hips off the floor. Grip your mat with your fingertips and try to pull. Feel the feet reach back. You might even lift your knees here to feel like you're trying to reach your feet back. Again, this could be the end of the pose here. <clears throat> and as Beth suggested, you can kind of tuck pelvis under, okay? Keep pushing down to straighten the arms, pull forward to continue the lengthening of the upper body, and maybe that provides a little bit more space to get deeper into the up dog. Yeah. Soften, bring the knees to the floor, send the hips back. If you need to rest, Go ahead and rest. Otherwise, tuck toes, lift the knees and hips, downward facing dog, and use down dog as a way to re-extend the spine after being in that back bend. And then we'll do the other side. Inhale, extend left leg up, bend and twist open. Unwind, step through, left foot to the top of the mat, right heel turns to the floor, find that center and balance, rise when you're ready, no rush. Exhale, open to warrior two. So same thing, once you found your balance, let's creep the left foot forward a tiny bit forward a couple times. Right foot back a little bit. There's our deeper sensation. Strong legs. Long lifted torso. Outstretched arms, side angle, reach out, rotate here. <clears throat> Breathing in and exhale, careful return to the floor with the hands, press hands in the floor, slide left foot back, plank pose. Just feel the straightening of the body here. Shortcut to down dog, bend your knees, send your hips into the sky. All right, let's move into our pigeon pose now. So inhale, extend right leg up, bend and twist, open, Unwind and send right knee to the floor. Your right knee land lightly behind the right wrist. Now as we're here, as you land, the leg might be at a 45 degree angle. That's fine, you can always change this. You set the left knee onto the floor, use the left knee and toes to crawl back. You're finding centering, just like we do when we get set for warrior one. We're just sending the energy back so we're balanced, but of course you're also getting deeper into the pose. Still tall here, inhale, extend through the spine. Exhale, crawl forward with the hands, lowering your body downward. Maybe it's just your forearms and elbows on the floor. You can even, even, even rest your forehead on the floor or bring a block in. Now be here for a moment, just check in, because sometimes it's not always easy to be here. What you can do is flip over onto your back, return to the reclining pigeon pose that we did earlier. And 
wherever you choose to be. Just see if you can just settle into the pose. Letting everything happen naturally here. And perhaps even just like in Warrior 2, where I had you go a little bit deeper into the pose, you can perhaps do the same thing here. You don't have to move too much. Just point your toes and just try to reach back through that left foot. Then you might even just lift your head, maybe your chest just a little bit, and try to extend the spine going forward and then come back down. And that's as much as you really need to do to go deeper into the pose. We'll take three more breaths here, noticing the sensations. And then moving slowly to come out of the posture if you're lying down, just rise up a bit, come onto the hands, and sit all the way over to your right side. You know, swing the left leg around, coming around to the front, extending the left leg out in front. You have to adjust your seat here, so left leg's extended, and right foot's just going to come to the inner leg, and just sit up nice and tall. If you use your hands just pressing into the floor to find that extension. Now if this knee is lifted, don't worry about it. You can bring in a block if you want and just place that block there. So head to knee pose or just a forward fold in this position. So go ahead and inhale, extend your arms up into the air. Exhale, hinge forward just a little bit, just a little, and then bring your hands down either to the floor or even to your leg. And then just continue to take breaths. You'll inhale to extend and lift. Exhale to gently fold and just keep repeating that. Now, of course, you can bend the left knee a lot if you need to as you guide your way down. As you fold, you might feel a natural rounded sensation in the back. And to emphasize that, if it feels good, you might take your hands out in front of you on the floor like this. I just kind of pop up onto my fingers and just gently pull. And just feel, a, for me, a nice stretch around my belt line, kind of a, above that area, low back. I tend to get pretty tight in those areas, so this feels pretty good. So Janu Shirshasana, or head to knee pose. We'll take two more breaths. If your head is lowered and your back is rounded, just lift the head and just kind of look out in front of you. That'll help re-extend the spine. F uh, free your hands, reach forward, then inhale and just hinge your way back up. Nice and tall, reach up high. Exhale, arms return to your side. Okay, stay where you are. Okay, so we're going to mimic what we did earlier on the floor. We're going to take this right leg and place it on top of the left, right there. Now, probably up on the thigh. We're going to do two things here. Alrighty. First, we're just going to lean back, hands behind you. Lean back, bend your elbows, and just drag the left foot towards you. So you're here. So it's in this cross legged position. All right, so we're getting into that hip again. So if you inhale and just press into the floor, straighten the arms, lifting the chest, you can send your body towards this cross leg, and that provides more sensation, perhaps. Or lean back, or even slide that front foot forward to release any tension, okay? So you can kind of play with the engagement, sensation, add movement, or just be with breath. Take two more breaths. There you go. After the second breath, just kind of soften. You might lean back, bend the elbow, re-extend the left leg, and just rise up nice and tall. Here you might want to hold on to the foot 
and the knee because we're going to fold forward. That might put more pressure because it's a bone of your ankle pushing into your thigh, so that might not feel good. So you're going to inhale, lift up. Exhale, just fold. Doesn't have to be much. Out towards the toes. There you go. Nice. Nice hamstring stretch. Even setting yourself up to do something like a full lotus pose just by bringing the leg up, the foot up on the thigh here. And then three more breaths. After the third breath, you can just roll back up or lift the chin and hinge your way back up. Hands behind you for support, lean back so you can uncross and then just extend the leg here. And just hold in staff pose. Maybe just sit up nice and tall for a moment. Okay, then lean back again so you can drag the heels ready for boat pose. We just catch underneath the knees. Again, the heels can always remain on the floor. Just extend the spine. Again, if you lean back, yes, you can lift the feet. Breathe in, lift. Exhale, cross legs, hands in front or to the side. So we can get the legs back behind us, plank pose. Strong straight line. Go ahead and just take a shortcut to downward facing dog. Take the opportunity to feel the re-extension of spine, lifting the hips a little higher with soft knees. We'll do that pigeon sequence on the other side. So we'll start with an inhale to extend the left leg up into the air. Bend and twist, a little opening. As we unwind, we carefully bring left knee down to the floor behind the left wrist with the angled leg. The right knee comes down, of course, using the right knee and toes to crawl back. Good, nice use of block there. Because if the hips don't make it down to the floor, and of course they don't have to, and you want to maintain alignment in the hips, just tuck a block or a rolled up blanket underneath that left hip. Finding your center and the appropriate sensation. You'll inhale to get some extension through the spine. Exhale, fold, coming down. And coming to a place that feels good. And as you continue to breathe, notice, feel, even intend for tight spaces to release. And just as we did on the other side, if you want to move deeper into the pose without aggravating the body, start by using your toes and in the right knee to help extend the right leg back. You might lift your head and heart a little bit and try to extend the spine as if you're trying to crawl forward and then come back down. And with those two conditions, you went a little deeper. Now technically this pose is called pigeon pose prep. It prepares us for the other variations of pigeon pose. And we'll do one of those variations. But first, just continue to experience the sensations and benefits of our pigeon pose prep. We'll take three more breaths. ready to move, go in slow motion, start to lift, use your hands, press and lift yourself up just enough so you can send your body over to your whole left side. So we're going to swing this right leg around to the front. We'll keep the right leg extended. Just reset yourself, extended right leg, bent left knee, foot on inner leg. If the knee doesn't touch the ground, remember you can just use a block. So nice and tall for Janu Shirshasana. We'll inhale and take the arms up, really lift here. Exhale, hinge just a little bit and just send the hands down to the floor or leg. And then just continue that process. Inhale, extended spine. Exhale, careful fold, not too far. 
and just repeat. Remember, it's okay to lower your chin, round your spine, even bend the right knee. Take your time. If you get to a point where you kind of get your kind of maximum stretch or sensation, that's probably where you want to pause or even back up a little bit so it doesn't strain the body. So your body doesn't go into that stress mode. Just kind of conditioning the body to be in somewhat stressful situations or challenging situations, but you can remain calm throughout them. All right, two more breaths. Just want to lift the head so you're looking out past your foot towards the front of the room. Free your hands, reach forward, inhale, hinge and rise up. Once you're tall here, keep lifting up and then bring the arms down to your side. Okay, go ahead and stay where you are. Okay, we do that same thing of bringing the right foot on top of the left thigh there. Hands behind you, lean back, bend the knee, slide this foot toward yourself and then lift up through the torso and send the body forward towards the cross leg. Adjusting as you need to here. Deep breaths. Notice where you have sensation. After your third breath, you might lean back, extend the leg. Here you may want to hold on to the foot and knee of this cross leg. Inhale, get nice and tall, and exhale, fold forward. We're holding on to the limbs here so we don't get all that pressure of the ankle bone pressing into your leg. Get a nice leg extension, hamstring stretch, maybe a little back stretch as you fold, and of course the hip opener. Okay, this gets into the knee joint, but if this is too much of a bend in the knee, you can certainly come out of the pose or just modify as you need to. The thing you just even think about the muscles that kind of support the knee here too. Three more breaths. After the third breath, you can just roll back up or just tip the chin forward, looking forward, hinge your way back up, yeah? Nice and tall, maybe leaning back so we can uncross the leg, extend the leg, hands by the, your hips on the floor, push to lift to decompress the spine. Okay, back to your boat pose. So lean back, drag the heels towards yourself. Heels can stay on the floor or let them float. Long spine, let's breathe in and exhale, cross legs, hands in front or to the side. Hop or step back, plank pose. Okay, strong straight line. Okay, bend the knees, hips to the sky. Just another shortcut to downward facing dog. We are gonna incorporate another back bend. So we're gonna do pigeon pose again, but use the back bend version. So inhale, extend right leg up, bend and twist. Unwind, send the right knee forward, landing behind right wrist, angled leg. Left knee comes down, crawl left knee and toes back, find your center. All right, right about here. Now we're gonna stay up high, but we're gonna reposition the hands. They're in front, but bring them by your side and prop yourself up onto your fingertips. That'll just make your arms longer. Okay, think about how we broke down up dog, upward facing dog. Here, we're just pushing into the floor with the fingertips to straighten the arms. We're lifting through the torso. We're trying to elongate through the torso. 
Okay, you're also trying to send the heart forward while this left leg is trying to reach back, trying to make as much space in this low back area. Okay, you don't have to come up too high. Okay, out here is fine. Just be mindful of your back and hips. Okay, but this is the other version of pigeon pose. Another, there's several others too. Okay, breathe in, exhale, melt, get the hands back out in front. Sit again over to your right side. Swing left leg around to the front, but this time bend both knees and bring the soles of the feet together. You'll be in cobbler's pose. Maybe catch the toes, ankles, or shins. Sit up tall initially, inhale, and exhale, maybe around your spine. Okay, folding forward. So this is our counter pose to that pigeon pose that we did with the back bend. So several breaths here to find balance. <clears throat> Again, to rise back up, you can roll back up or lift the chin, look forward to extend the spine and hinge your way back up. Return to boat just by leaning back, bring the knees together, maybe the feet float into the air. Inhale, we're moving right away. Exhale, cross legs, hands in front, hop or step back, plank pose, strong straight legs, strong spine, of course, strong arms. Shortcut to down dog, bend your knees, hips into the air. Other side, inhale, extend left leg up and back, bend and twist open, there's our hip opener. Unwind, knee to the floor behind the left wrist, angled leg, sending it down, right knee comes down, use right knee and toes to crawl the leg back finding what feels best. Reposition your hands to your side, propped up on fingertips. Push down to straighten the arms. Lift torso, lengthening through the spine, creating length. Feel like you're moving forward as the right leg extends back. Even here, if you're able, yeah, you're, you can still try to tuck pelvis under. It won't move much, but you might feel your glutes engage, which is fine because that actually might help support the body. Inhale, exhale, fold, hands out in front, just getting out of that back bend. Sit off to your left side, right leg comes around to the front. Same thing, cobbler's pose, soles of the feet touch. Inhale, nice long spine, exhale, round, come forward. About two more breaths here. You can roll back up or lengthen the spine then hinge your way back up. Here you can start to extend the legs. Be sure you're still sitting in the center of your mat. Go ahead and roll down onto your back. Let's bring knees into chest. Life at as you maybe just massage your back just by creating maybe circles or figure eights, holding onto the knees and make those circles and figure eight shapes. Massaging the low back. Maybe circle the feet and ankles since you were lying on top of the feet for some of these poses, like pigeon. Let's take a spinal twist. We'll start by sending the knees over to the left side. Extend your right arm out to the right side. Two more breaths. When you're ready, return to center. You might pause here for a moment, allowing the spine to realign. And then send knees over to the right side of the room. Left arm to the left side. 
create your spinal twist. Maybe one last hug of the knees in toward your body, then extend the legs out onto the floor in front of you, arms resting down by your side. As you arrive in Shavasana, feel free to stay here and be here, or move into another restorative position, something that feels relaxing and nurturing. Turn to the awareness of your breath. Notice your breath. And with this awareness, take five slow, steady breaths with the intention of bringing movement back into your body. First, notice the subtle movements. Then become aware of the grander movements. Continue to feel movement return. And when you're ready, slowly and carefully roll onto either side of your body just moving into a nurturing pose, even briefly pause in that posture. And then continue to move as slowly as you can and guide your way up to a seated position. Nice lengthening through the spine. Arms can relax by your side. Hands resting on your knees or in your lap or bring hands to heart center and take one more full and complete breath. And as we come to the close of our practice together, we bow saying Namaste. Thank you so much for watching and participating in this yoga lesson. To help us with the channel so we can continue to bring you more content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's really appreciated. Namaste.